Wellspring Church of All Nations presents Screams in the Desert, hosted by Pastors George and Sharon Stoker. dynamic Las Vegas couple bring the life-changing Word of God alive through anointed prophetic ministry. Their teaching causes mountain-moving faith to bring the victory of God's love to bear on the everyday issues of life. Join George and Sharon now as they share with you the secrets and joys of a fulfilling, abundant, spirit-filled, and spirit-led life. I want to talk to you out of Joshua 1 tonight. Joshua, Yeshua, one. And uh, talk about five ways to lead a victorious life. I think that's a good thing. <laughs> Better than a defeated life, have a, a, def a victorious life. And... Uh, if you remember, there was a whole generation of Israel that wished and died wishing. And for them, 40 years of wandering turned the promised land into fantasy land. And for the same 40 years, Joshua traveled with them, but he and Caleb, with a different spirit, nurtured a victory just waiting to happen. It's a whole different way of looking at things. And when God commissioned him, Joshua responded. And what he did, he turned others' wishes into land and cities and homes and possessions and the inheritance of generations to come. Joshua 1. Thank you. So the question to me is why did Joshua succeed where others did not. And it's really important, I think, if we understand that the answer really, uh, the, the reasons all lay in Joshua's own heart. It was in the man, not in his circumstances. His circumstances were the same as everybody else's. And that's the difference between what happens for some people and what doesn't happen for others. Success is in ourselves and God's word, not in our circumstances. So the, there's, we'll say, five victory factors behind Joshua's success, uh, all out of Joshua 1. First, first of all, realize your greatness is in God. Realize your greatness is in God. Twice the Bible makes this wonderful, all-inclusive statement in Matthew 19, 26, Mark 10, 27. With God, all things are possible. All things. Not most things, not some things. All things are possible with God for the believer. Joshua didn't ride into Canaan on the back of an Arabian stallion, you know, but he marched in on the basis of the promises of God. It wasn't by might. It wasn't by horses. It was, it was by the Spirit of God. God said, every place, Joshua chapter 1, verse 3, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I've given to you. It's an interesting thing to consider that where your where your foot carries you, that's yours. Hallelujah. Secondly, all all of God's promises to others are ours by faith. All of God's promises to others are ours by faith. And 
really God's word is uh, for you and I as much as if he personally appeared and spoke it. We, we, you know, there we go back to how, how dependable is the word of God. It's that dependable. It is still alive. It still has his breath in it. It still will accomplish what he sent it to do. All we need to do is inhale. <laughs> really. <laughs> huh? you're, you're, our only requirement is to put on his promises by faith. To inhale his breath, to receive it. Uh, what, what did God promise to Joshua? From the wilderness, is verse 4, to the going down of the sun. From the wilderness to the sunset, that's your, that's your promise. That's your territory. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> if you're in a wilderness, take a look at the sunset. The promise is yours. I mean, the, the Bible does say, ask of me, I'll give you the nations. Amen. Well, really? Yeah, really. I've noticed that every time I go, and of course I never receive anything unless I go, but if I go, when I go, if I go, the nations are open to me. Because they're open to the Spirit of God, and you, you go as his representative. For Joshua and Israel, the only land remaining to be possessed was what Joshua had made up his mind to have. <laughs> huh? It was theirs by faith. It, it ha and it happened when he decided. I, I think that's interesting. There is, there is that mystical line in faith and its manifestation is when the decision is made, I'm going to have it, then you get it. And so the, the arguments are over. The questioning is over. It happened when he decided. The, in other words, the door of history swung open at his touch. We don't, we don't appropriate what is rightfully ours. We wrestle with it in our thinking. We're questioning. We're wondering. We're pondering. We're, you know, we've got a million and one excuses, whatever. But the minute we decide, we make the decision to take our possession, we reach out and we touch it. And thirdly, get a vision of what you should do for God and then work to bring it about. Get, get a vision of what you should do for God and then work to bring it about. And we understand it's not, it's not by our strength. It's not, you know, because of human effort. And, and that's why to get a vision of what God of what you should do for God, you're, you're finding out the will of God for your life and the purpose for your life. Once you know that, your work is not flesh, it's not carnal. You're just simply walking in faith to fulfill what he's already shown you. One of the most deeply rooted beliefs, or, or unbeliefs, I should say, some have, is that God's presence is greater with some people than with others. For some reason, we look at others and we say, well, Gosh, if I just had Ken Copeland's anointing, if I just had Reinhard Bonnke's anointing, if I just had Joyce Meyer's anointing, if I just had... But the, the simple truth of it is, we all have the same anointing. Because the same anointed one and his anointing is within us. And we've been given the measure of faith. All we need to do is begin to use it. We step out. It may just be giving a word in, in the congregation. It may just be, you know, of service. 
where you are. But it begins to open doors because you're moving by faith and you're saying, no, I'm taking possession. I'm going, there's a place for me and I'm going to, I'm going to walk into it. I'm going to step into it. You know, I'm always about knock Robbie down this morning, you know, because she, she was not afraid to just walk up and take her place. She feels she's got a word from God, you know, so. No, it's really that simple, isn't it? I mean, once you get over whatever it is we need to get over, right, you just step into your place, and that place opens wide for you, and it makes, it makes your gift makes room for you. And then the anointing is no, no greater, no less on you than it is anybody else. Any Christian can run the devil off. I mean, that's what Mark 16 says. Right. Praise the Lord. And, and from the beginning, God said, I will, Joshua 1, 5, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Well, what else do we need then? I mean, it's always scary, and I understand that. You, whether you step up to a pulpit to, to preach, whether you're going to sing, whether you're going to... Whatever you're going to do, there's, there's that, that moment or, or few moments as you move into that position. It's you. It's all natural. It's you. And you feel this, at least I do, this sense of if God don't show up, we're all in deep trouble here. Right? It's really, it's, it's, it's a, what, scary place, sort of, kind of. Less and less as you realize that you've never arrived anywhere that he hasn't been there. When you get there, he's ready to go. And he'll take care of you. I don't know how many people have said, you know, like, like this story in Saul, he became another man. When the anointing came, you become a different person. You do. You do. You're, it's just not the same. That's why people can be, I mean, barely able to move and, and yield to, to the call of God on their life and just tough it out and do it. And all of a sudden, they're just as if there was nothing wrong with them. And then when they're all done, they feel like a wet dish rag and they're going to die again, which is kind of silly. But that does happen a lot. I talk to a lot of preachers and they, they'll do that. They're just, oh man, they can hardly even move and they get behind the pulpit and go like a house of fire. And when they're done, it's like, why couldn't I keep that? <laughs> right? And maybe, there's, maybe there's something in faith there that uh, we could walk it uh, in a <laughs> walk out better. But uh, it's an interesting thing. God said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Period. He'll always be there. He promised this to Joshua. He repeated the same statement 1,300 years later by the writer of Hebrews in Hebrews 13.5. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is with us not because we're good, not because we have great faith. He's with us because he has con committed himself irrevocably uh, to us. That's the covenant. We commit ourselves to him. He committed himself to us. And he doesn't change. And if God was with us only when we had success, I'll guarantee you none of us would be successful. <laughs> right? Promotion comes from the Lord. Really. He, he, he makes rich and adds no sorrow to it. Okay. Number four, know that God is with you as much as he was with anybody. God is with you as much as he was with anybody. Don't hang around waiting for the right circumstances. All the people that were with Joshua could have been Joshua in attitude, in heart, in mind. I mean, at least he, Caleb was there. I imagine they had some some times of encouraging each other. But uh, the circumstances can be anything. But God, when God becomes our circumstance, that takes care of everything. 
Hmm? He's with you always. He said he's, he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you. And he is your circumstance. And if anyone has achieved anything or received anything, it's simply because they just took advantage of this great circumstance, being that God is their circumstance. You and I can go forth in the name of the Lord with the same courage that God drummed into Joshua over and over again in verse 6, be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Only be strong and be very courageous, verse 7. Be strong and of good courage and do not be afraid or dismayed, verse 9. He just, boom, one, two, three. Be strong, be of good courage. Don't be dismayed. <laughs> Don't be afraid. I'm with you. I'll never leave you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And believe, number five, believe God's word and act on it. Faith without works or corresponding action <clears throat> is lifeless, it's dead. It'll accomplish nothing. We can believe ourselves silly if we don't move on what we believe. Nothing's going to happen. God didn't give Joshua <clears throat> much forewarning when he said within three days he'd cross the Jordan to possess the land in verse 11. Pass through the host, command the people, prepare you victuals for within three days you're going to pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God gives you to possess it. <clears throat> when he speaks, it's really going to be real close to time to move. And we don't want to hesitate. We want to get ready <clears throat> and do it. And... Uh, you know, Israel had been on the east side of the Jordan for an entire generation, and they were used to thinking of the other side as being uh, a dangerous place, a fantasy land, right? And they, they had become grasshoppers in their own sight. It's like the giants are over there, and we're just little grasshoppers over here. As long as we stay over here... We're not going to have any grasshopper-eating giants over here. We're going to be fine. We can just nibble on what's here. But now God says, three days, you're out of here. Change your attitude. Get ready to move. Here we go. <clears throat> giants, beware. <laughs> huh? <clears throat> and, and if you think you're a grasshopper, the problem is you are. If you think you can't, you can't. If you think you won't, you won't. So, so there has to be a change. As, as a person thinks in their heart, so are they. That's why it's so important to pump in the Word of God, pump in the Word of God, pump in the Word of God, until we really begin to believe it, that that's me. That's who God's talking about. I'm the more than a conqueror he's talking about. I'm the overcomer that he's talking about. I'm the one who has an unsurpassing victory in Christ. That's the one he's talking about. It's not you, it's not them, but it's me. And I understand that getting that to settle in to where it's not questioned, it can, it's, it's, can be difficult. It can take time. But then how long do you want to stay on the wrong side of the Jordan? I get a little tired of the grasshopper food, right? See, in God, you're not ever a grasshopper. You're not ever uh, the tail. You're always the head in God, always. You're never poor in God. You're always rich. You're never sick in God. You're always healed. You're never tormented 
in, uh, by the devil in God. You're always of a sound mind. You're never uh, hateful. You're always walking in love in God. And, and that's that's the whole the whole of it. And, and realize what's happening. When God called Joshua, the Lord said to Joshua, Moses is dead. Now therefore arise and go. So, so what a moment for purpose to unfold. It begins with a funeral. It begins with the loss of a great friend and a great leader. It, it's a disastrous hour. What worse could happen to us? Moses, the prophet of God who brought us through the Red Sea, who delivered us from Egypt, is no longer with us. And the people were already griping and complaining. And so Moses said, this Joshua's got the same spirit. I put the same spirit on him that was on me. How many people do you think really believed that? It was not a good time. But see, if the circumstance is God instead of the circumstance that surrounds you, it's the best time. Many times, many times, our breakthroughs come through at, at the at during the greatest crisis. That's that's when they happen. When everything looks totally impossible, God steps in and says, "No, no, you you remember, nothing is impossible with me." Hallelujah. I'm expecting that. We're coming up on June. Need fifty thousand dollars. Or 42-something 40, now. It's a lot of money. It's impossible. Hallelujah. What's God going to do? What is God going to do? He'll do something. Because we quit being grasshoppers, and we quit looking at the giants, except on a few rare occasions. Let the flesh step in. <laughs> right? Huh? So we cast off the feelings of inferiority and we remember that our a person's greatness only lies in God. It's, it's so foolish for people to think that they are so something. They achieve success, they achieve position, they achieve prominence, they achieve whatever it is, and, and they think they did it. And that, that is ridiculous. Where they, where they should be honoring God and thanking God and giving the credit to God, it's like, oh, look at what I did. But a person's greatness lies only in God. And that's why Joshua succeeded. Because he understood that. He knew he couldn't. But he knew God could and would. And it's just because the same God who was with Moses was with him. That was the promise of God. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Oh, well. Wow. Huh? <laughs> Glory. Huh? So, and he's the same God who's with you tonight and tomorrow and the next day. Same God. I mean, I'm just I'm thrilled at what he's doing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Does that help you? Yes. Praise God. Realize your greatness is in God. All of God's promises to others are yours by faith. Get a vision of what you should do for God. Work to bring it out. Know that God is with you as much as he is with anybody. Believe God's word and act on it. Pretty simple, really. The life of faith, the walk of faith to bring us into the victory of
of God, the victorious Christian life, if you will. Hallelujah. It's just simple, really, trust and obey. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. <laughs> There's no other way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's all I got to me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you that you are our God. Ours collectively and ours individually. And that every everything you have ever said to anybody applies to us. That we can just step in that place step into you as our circumstance and then move with you. And you'll, we'll give you all the glory, Lord, because to you and you alone does it go and is it deserved. And we thank you and praise you for it. Hallelujah. Introducing the new Zulon Press book, Integrity, The Last Great Battle, by George M. Stover, Jr., Demon, Th.D., Ph.D. Integrity, The Last Great Battle, is available at Christian bookstores and online. Purchase it today. Thank you for being with us. We count it a privilege and a sacred trust to bring you the words of truth found in Scripture. It's our prayer that you've been strengthened and encouraged by this message, and it's our heart's desire that you come to know Jesus like never before and that you're drawn into the Word of God by the Spirit of the Lord working through these sermons. Other teaching CDs, DVDs, books, and brochures are available in our bookstore and media store, or you can purchase them on our website at wellspringministries.com. Our phone number is 702-631-5027. Give us a call if we can serve you in any way. We look forward to our next opportunity to be with you and share with you the wonderful, life-changing things of God. May God richly bless you as you pursue your high calling in Christ Jesus.